If you're a fan of the It At Alls module, then boy, have I got a treat for you. Recently, I found a third party library that adds a lot more of these functions, specifically 151, which is an awful lot. Now, a good number of these functions are just very basic variations on the things you get in the standard It At Alls library, but there are some really cool original things in there as well that I wanna show off. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a slightly unconventional seven of these functions that I think are really cool and give a good idea about what the library is all about. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's find out all the weird and wacky ways that we can work with iterators. Before we do anything with iterators, we have to install it. So we can go into our terminal and do pip install more underscore iterators and do that. Uh, I'm using version 10.4, which is the version with 151 functions in it. By the time you're seeing this video, there might be even more. Who knows? Now, the first of our seven functions today is the bucket, and it's not technically a function, it's a class, but whatever. Uh, it allows you to bucket elements in an iterable based on some factor. So in this case, we're going to be bucketing our fruits by their colors. So we can have a series of buckets. That is a bucket. Uh, and it takes our iterable, in this case a dictionary, and then we pass in a callable that will then bucket the element. So we want to take in the fruit, which will be the key in this case, and then we want to get the value out of it, and then this value will be used um, to put in a bucket. Well, that would be the name of the bucket, and then the, the element would be put in that bucket. So if I do print uh, list buckets, and I'm doing this as a list, I'm casting it to a list, because the buckets uh, and the the elements within a bucket are all like generator types. So I'm just doing this so we can show them off. And we can see that we have the red, yellow, purple, green, and orange buckets, which makes sense considering those are our colors. If we were to print out uh, our, so if I do list uh, buckets, and then we can just access this like a dictionary. So if I were to do all of our red fruits, we can see that apple, cherry, date, and raspberry are red. If we were to access all our yellow fruits, see that we have banana, lemon, mango, and pineapple. The second thing I want to show you is windowing. So it at all does have an element of windowing already. It has pairwise. What that will do is if, if you have A, B, C, D, E, it will return A, B, and then B, C, oops, and then C, D, et cetera, et cetera. So it slides over one element at a time uh, and, and gets the amount of elements you want, which in pairwise is two, obviously. In triple wise, you could probably work out uh, that that number is three instead. So we could do four triple in triple wise fruits, print triple, and then we can get rid of that for a second. Uh, if we do that, we could see that we get apple, banana, cherry, and then we get banana, cherry, date, cherry, date, grape. So we're sliding over the iterable one step at a time. And instead of two elements at a time, like uh, pairwise would, uh, would return, we're getting three elements at a time. If you want more than three elements, you can use windowed. So if I do window in windowed fruits, and then if you put three, it will do exactly the same thing as triple. But if you want say six, then you could do that. And then you have a window with six elements at a time and it slides again across each one. You can, uh, I'll just look up the signature. Yeah, you can provide a step. So if you want a step equals three, for example, uh, and you can see that we're moving across three at a time rather than just one. This third one is probably my favorite one of them all, and it is collapse. And you can see that our fruits list has become really messed up. There are lists inside lists inside lists all over the place. And trying to flatten this using any other flattening solution would only normally flatten one level of nesting. But collapse allows you to flatten any amount of nesting into a completely flat list. And to show that off, you could just do print list collapse because it does return it as an iterable, not as a list itself, fruits. And then if we do collapse like that, our list is now completely flat, which is really cool. Now the fourth one I wanna show you is sample. And you may think at this point that random has a sample and it does, in fact, we're importing it up here, but it does have some limitations. So here we have the list of fruits that we've had this whole time. And here we have a list of fruits that have the letter E in their name. We don't know at this point in time how long this iterable is going to be. And this is where random.sample has no idea what to do. 
uh, because it needs to know as I'm going to show this. So if you just get three and we print selection, uh, if we do sample like that, we see that we get an error saying population must be a sequence. So a sequence in Python is something that supports the len method effectively. So something where the length is known. In this case, it's not known because it's just a generator. However, if we were to comment that out and uncomment the more iter tools version, then we have a fully working, a fully working, a fully working sampling system. So that time we got lemon, raspberry, and lime. That time we got grape, pear, and cherry, and we get three random ones every time. So the main difference between the two is that random dot sample does need to know the length of the iterable beforehand. Uh, more iter tools dot sample doesn't. Now you could say that you could convert e fruits into a list or a tuple or something like that before you sample it. And if you think that's what you want to do, then go for it. <laughs> More iter tools just provides another option. You don't have to use it. Our fifth one is probably the simplest out of the whole lot. What I've done is I've updated our list of fruits to have some duplicates in it. So we've got cherry in there twice. We've got lemon in there three times and we've got pineapple in there twice. Uh, what unique can do is essentially remove the duplicates as you're iterating through it. So if we do from uh, for fruit in unique fruits, if we just print fruit and then do dot upper to show that we're actually processing it, uh, unique like that, we get apple, banana, cherry, grape, kiwi, lemon, orange, pear, pineapple, and raspberry. Note how there aren't any duplicates in that list, and that's because we have phased them all out. So this avoids the need for us to cast the iterable to a set beforehand, but it also maintains the ordering, unlike set. If you really didn't want to use this and you wanted to maintain the ordering, you could use dict.fromkeys to do the same thing, but dict.fromkeys is significantly slower than set. And realistically, this is going to be faster, perhaps than even both of them, because you don't have to do any casting to any types at all. The sixth and final one I'm showing you is numeric range, and it's the only one that doesn't use our fruits list. Uh, fruits tend not to come in numbers, typically, uh, so we're using numbers instead. Uh, numeric range with integers works pretty much the same as range. I don't know if it just uses range under the hood or not, but what makes uh, numeric range special is that it can actually support floats. So in this second example, we are starting from 1.75 and we are ending at 7.0. And if I were to run this, this first one uh, works up here. The second one starts at 1.75 and it uses a step of one. If you wanted to change it to use a step of 1.75, uh, then we will, and then it won't actually include 7, so we could say maybe 7.1. Then we get 7 down here, now we're using a step that's a float as well. However, what makes numeric range really cool, and the real reason I'm showing you, is that you can do this with date times as well. So if I were to import date time as DT, and then if I just copy paste this code from my notes in, we start uh, from the 1st of January 2024 and we end at the 1st of January 2025 and we are creating a numeric range uh, from the start to the end and if you pass a time delta as a step we can advance whatever we want so in this case we are advancing uh, 7 days and 4053 seconds to be particularly specific to kind of show it off and as you can see we are advancing, indeed, uh, seven days, one hour, seven minutes, and 33 seconds each step. And we can do that until we uh, get to the very end uh, without exceeding the end range, which in this case is actually nine o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day. That's probably when a lot of people will wake up on Christmas Day, actually. That's kind of freaky that I've done that. But there you go. <laughs> But I wanted to show this off because this is really cool. I've only ever seen this done in pandas before and being able to do this without having to use pandas and all that comes with it is actually really nice to have. And the final one I'm showing you today is a bit of a wild card because it is a function that can turn any other function in more to tools and indeed any function that takes the same signature into a decorator. So you can create a decorator out of any of the other functions. So if we had our fruits and we got the colors back and everything, uh, if we had a function that was get all yellow fruits and then we pass in fruits and then we simply return that. If we just print this for a second list, oh no, we don't want to sample it yet. No, you're spoiling it, AI, you're spoiling it. If you were to run the correct one, that, that would help probably. 
Uh, we get banana, lemon, mango, and pineapple, which is correct. However, if we wanted to sample this instead, then we could create a sampler, which had make decorator, and then we pass sample in like that. And now suddenly sampler is a decorator that we can apply to this. And then we do need to pass a number in. So sampler does take a K value. K would be three. So the only one you're actually missing when you have sample is the iterable. So this function here becomes the iterable in a sense, i.e. the return value gets passed to the first, um, the first parameter of this function. And you can pass in any other functions or any other parameters you want. So three, we're passing in K. We could pass in weights or counts or strict if we wanted to as well. Now, if we do that, we get a random sample of three of these. If we wanted specifically to create a decorator that only ever sample three things, we could go even further and say random, oh, let's call it sample three, uh, sample three, and then we could use the fancy decorator syntax to decorate the function and then call that with three. And then if we sample three like that, then again, we get three. And actually, if I do two to show this off a bit better, you can see we're now only getting two, even though the function name is sample three. So I'll put it back <laughs> before anyone gets really angry. But I wanted to show that off as a bit of a wild card. It is one of the wilder ones out there. And to be honest, more Itter Tools has a lot of these really wild ones, as well as a lot of really simple ones like Unique. There's a whole broad spectrum of what you can do with this. And well, yeah, 151 functions is certainly not a small amount. And this includes being able to do all sorts of mathematical operations as well. I haven't really shown any of them here, but you can do all sorts of math operations. You can do other grouping things. You could do combinate tricks. You could do the lot. It's pretty mental. <laughs> let me know in the comments which of these seven is your favorite, or if you've used more Itter tools before, then let me know which is your favorite from the entire library. It'd be really cool to hear some of the use cases some of these functions get put into. If you're interested in more ways that Python can be awesome, I have a series dedicated to it called Python is Awesome. You can find it in the end cards and I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.